Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today we're gonna close off chapter eleven by just talking about some of the other stuff that is that are in there and things you might want to look at eventually. I don't think you should necessarily go um, try to look at them now unless you have the time, etc. But at least it's a good idea to know what's what else is in there in case in the future you want to do some stuff. You go, oh, this is where I kind of go look for it. So. Um, we're gonna mention some of those. We're not gonna look at it in depth. We're not gonna look at the code I think that though some of them are fairly easy it, by now you can know how to implement something along that line So we're not gonna get into that sort of detail um, but There is the standard error um, variable um, Again, when you look at what we're doing, we'll be playing with standard out then in the previous video We played with standard in and there's also standard error I'm going to give you a short example of standard error because since it's so closely related to standard out and standard in, I figured out it might make sense to just close that whole loop by also, so in this section we are going to do some coding, but it's going to be on standard error only. The other things I'm just going to mention. Other things in the US pa package um, related to files is that you can set a location seeking to a location in a file. And you might wanna do that because let's imagine that you have um, a database file, for example, and you want to skip some record and go to a specific one, or maybe you had a binary file with a header, and it, once you read the header, it would tell you where um, in the rest of the files you can find different things. And it might not be that oh, just after the header, you actually wanna read the next set of data, so you wanna skip into um, jump around in the file. So those files, allow, that allows for random read and write, where you can just jump to any location within the file and like modify things. So then you might wanna um, you have a file open, and usually when we close a file is when the data actually goes from in memory into the file. So for example, if you have a file open and your system crash before you can close it, you might lose your data. So if you're writing something very important to files, like let's say you're receiving it off our network or the user's typing it in, or you're doing some computation and you're writing it out to file, you might want to flush periodically. Um, and that takes it from in memory and the um, file cache and write it out into the file on disk. The other thing you might want to do is truncate a file. So you might open up a file that's um, 10 gigs and you might want to truncated to one gig forever, for whatever reason, sorry, not forever, for whatever reason. And, um, you know, there's ability to do that. Environmental variables. We haven't talked about environmental variables at all, really, but again, depend, um, all operating system have the concept of environmental variables, which are just key values that are set. Um, starting and in a process. So, uh, this is if you, within your program, you want to start another application, another process. So if you wanted to run like LS from within your program, for example, you can do it. Or anything else, right? It's just another process. So how do you do that? The OS package allows you to do that. Remember, we're talking about the OS packages, the OS package and some of the things that are in there that we didn't look at. Host name, you can get the host name of the computer. Um, user info, um, again, information about the user, the user ID, the group and all these other things. And then there are even more things in there. All right, so I, like I said, I just want to give you an idea of some of the things that are in there. Here is, uh, we're gonna jump in, open up our code editor, and I'm gonna speed this up because, you know, you don't really need to see me type that stuff up. The important thing here is what it looks like when it's finished. And for that, we have a pretty good idea um, that all I'm gonna try and do is write two sentences or two strings to standard output, and I'm gonna write one string to standard error. And the way I'm gonna use, do it is I'm gonna use FMT print line, and we know it's all underneath, that is just really using standard out variable, okay? Or is that standard out? I'm gonna write another string using or is that standard out explicitly, which, which is on line 11. But on line 12, notice the difference. I'm gonna say, OS that standard error that write string because remember we said that our standard in standard out and standard error are files They're special files that the operating system provides to you. Well The operating system and the programming language, whatever. So it's just like distinction there how they provide it to you But let's just stick with the um, operating system, okay? Um, because really that's where the Unix like environment is which provides this idea of files like this in Windows it's a slightly different story, but things have been adopted in Windows to look the same. So you don't have to really think about the difference. And so we know that standard in is your keyboard, standard out is your monitor. So what is standard error then? And so let's just run our code um, now that we have written it and let's see um, 
what is the standard error writes to. And if we run, we see it all, the string that we write to standard error shows up also on standard out. So standard out and standard error, they're on our monitor, sorry, I should say, on our display. So they're both standard out and standard error goes to the display. So let's build our program and it just makes it easy for us to just keep rerunning it. And now we can run it again and we see our error output is a little bit clearer. So they both end up on the, the, the display. So what is the real difference then? Why should you want to use one versus the other if they both um, you know, end up on your display? Well, let's redirect our output. Again, this is going to be slightly different, but for most operating systems, you can do it this way. Uh, Windows is, used to be weird, but you should be able to type it this way. And notice when I redirect my output, the stuff that I written to standard out went into the file, and the stuff that I written to standard error should have stored up, still showed up on this, the display. Um, the other thing I could do is redirect standard error. And so now, all the stuff that I write to standard out came out, but only the things that I wrote to standard error went into this file. So they are different, and um, you might be confused about why we're using, you know, um, a two versus um, not not a, no number. Um, that is beyond the scope of this, but basically what we're doing is we're using the file descriptor that's associated with standard in, standard out, and standard error. And the file descriptor is like a number. And so zero is associated with standard in, one is associated with standard out, and two is associated with standard error. And so what I'm showing here is that once you, even if you redirect more than once, you just redirect in to standard out, and we did that to multiple files, and I showed three ways of comparing the output of a file. So notice when I redirect the standard out and then do a second redirect and I call the file error, it was still standard out that I redirected to. If I really want to do redirect standard error, I have to use the, um, the two. Now, programs that you have been using do use this error and standard out and standard error. Um, and so here's an example. I'm going to use ls and I'm going to specify a non-existent file. And then when I redirect it, the listing, as you could see, um, the error message is the only one that came out, but the listing for the files went into my listing.txt. And if I redirect the error, which is used the file descriptor too, notice that the error went to the file, but the listing showed up. So this again shows you that while you may not be aware of it when we use ls, and even when we wrote our ls, we never worry about separating our error messages from you know non-error messages by using standard uh, error to write error messages, now you know. And now you can see why um, you have these two different things. Is so that people who use your application can choose to say that, you know what, if there are errors, I want it to go somewhere else um, other than if there are non errors. There's a way to separate error messages from non error messages. And that's why we have the idea of standard out and standard errors. And in the event that you do not do anything in terms of separating them, they both just show up on standard. On, on the display, okay? So they both tied to the display by default. All right, uh, that seems like a mouthful. It seems like a lot. If that's confusing to you, again, it's because it's probably the first time you've seen it. Um, you're probably not accustomed to the idea of a file descriptor and what does that mean exactly? And we're not really gonna get into it. Um, when I do my C course, um, join me then, and we're gonna really see the file descriptor at the low level because you're actually gonna be able to open a file and get that number associated with a file descriptor. Anyway, enough said about file and file descriptor. The important thing here is that the standard out, standard error exists, and you can write to it just like standard out, and it allows users of your application to separate the two set of streams of um, output that you might wanna write. Thanks a lot for your time. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Definitely hit the thumbs up, I really appreciate it. Um, see you in the next video. We're going to be starting another chapter, and the chapter is going to be on the FMT package. Um, so join me for that. Um, take care. Have a great day. See you. Bye.